everyone and welcome to this video overview of our third module in our balanced assessment series where we are focusing on clarifying and sharing learning goals and success criteria. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I'm joined today by Misty Higgins and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. So what resources are available to support Kentucky educators as they work to create and implement a comprehensive balanced system of assessment that is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And then also, how can schools and districts utilize the formative assessment process to help students meet the grade level expectations built within the CAS? We are currently in our second year of the three year implementation plan that is focused on balanced assessment. So really addressing that question of how do we know if students have learned? And as part of our fall 2020 professional learning series, the very first module on comprehensive balanced system of assessment was released in September and is available on kystandards.org. Our October module really took a closer look at formative assessment, so a deep dive from that broad picture we started with to that granular size at the classroom level. And now really drilling down even deeper at the classroom level is our current module, which will focus on clarifying learning progressions, learning goals, and success criteria to really elicit meaningful evidence of student learning. And so why? Why would we have this focus on formative assessment? Well, we know from the research that when the formative assessment process is implemented in an intentional and purposeful way, it can greatly impact student achievement. And at the heart of the formative assessment process, it is about noticing, recognizing, and responding to the evidence of student learning so that both the teachers and the students can help move toward whatever the established learning goals might be. We know that for our students, when the formative assessment process is a part of our daily teaching and learning, it can help foster self-regulation and student ownership as they become more active participants in the learning process. And then it also gives students the feedback they, they need on what their possible next steps might be to help reach those intended learning outcomes. For teachers, we know that the formative assessment process gives them the feedback needed to determine how effective their instruction was in helping students reach those learning goals. And we also know finally, it helps to identify students that might need additional instructional supports, as well as those students who may be ready for enrichment. So that is really just a broad reasoning of why we really want to focus on formative assessment. So now let's take a closer look at this new module and how it will help to help us in eliciting meaningful evidence of student learning. So module three is focused on clarifying and sharing learning goals and success criteria because this is a critical first step in really supporting the formative assessment process at the classroom level. So when we look at the purpose for this module, our learning goals are that we want participants to understand how learning goals and success criteria really work together to drive the formative assessment process by supporting both students and teachers in understanding what success looks like aligned to the standards. And we also want participants to understand the characteristics of meaningful learning goals and success criteria that drive teaching and learning and really foster that student self-regulation and ownership in the learning process. Our success criteria for this module, we want participants to be able to develop meaningful learning goals and align success criteria so that they can share those with the students that will allow them to manage their own learning. As a part of this module, it does consist of two sessions. The first session is the professional learning, where participants take a deep look at the content around learning goals and success criteria. Session two offers participants an opportunity to apply their learning through a teacher collaboration activity, and each session is designed to take about an hour. 
in terms of looking at the overview of the content contained within the professional learning, it's going to start with a brief introduction and then just a quick refresher of the formative assessment process that was introduced in module two. In, in section three, it's going to take a closer look at how the formative assessment process is going to help our students answer one of the first questions around clarity of where am I going? And then we know that we do that through learning goals and success criteria. So section four is going to take a closer look at the characteristics of meaningful learning goals and success criteria. Section five is then how do we use those to really engage our students in the learning process? And section six is kind of a check for understanding that's focused on improving learning goals and success criteria. One important note about this module. Throughout the professional learning session, you are going to see examples of learning goals and success criteria from different content areas aligned to the Kentucky academic standards. Please note that those are only meant to be possible suggestions. They in no way represent the only learning goals and success criteria you might use because they really just represent one snapshot one moment in time of a greater learning progression that would be used to help students reach the intended depth of a particular grade level standard so again just know those are only possible suggestions not the only ones that you would use around a particular standard for the teacher collaboration activity you have the welcome and then a quick refresher on learning goals and success criteria with the bulk of the time being spent in what we call a lesson tune up activity. Now this particular activity, there are two to choose from because we really wanted to meet learners where they are. So if you are new to using learning goals and success criteria and developing them from the Kentucky Academic Standards, we recommend that you choose the lesson tune-up activity that is entitled Creating Learning Goals and Success Criteria. However, if you have been utilizing learning goals and success criteria for a while, we recommend that you choose the option of revising learning goals and success criteria for your lesson tune-up. Again, they're just designed to meet you where you are and help you best apply your learning to the classroom setting from this module. The resources that are available to support this module, we do have a facilitator's guide and the PowerPoint presentation for each session. There are links to additional handouts and resources for participants who want to go deeper in their understanding of this particular content. And this also includes a video of learning goals and success criteria in action so that participants can really see how we're able to utilize these at the classroom level to help students manage their own learning. And then finally, we have a meaningful learning goals and success criteria checklist. This is meant to just be a quick reference to support teachers in the planning process of developing learning goals and success criteria from the Kentucky Academic Standards. It includes guiding questions that are aligned to the characteristic that you learn in this module to ensure that you truly are creating those meaningful learning goals and success criteria to support the formative assessment process. This is the first page of the checklist and you can see it is focused in on developing the learning goals. So across the top, there are guiding questions that go along with the characteristics from the module and underneath of each one, you're gonna see additional considerations that will help you better think through each one and apply it to the learning goals that you are creating. You will see a similar format on the second page of the quick reference for the success criteria checklist. So again, guiding questions along the top that match with the characteristics we learn about in this module with those additional considerations underneath. And again, the whole purpose of this module comes back to to really support the formative assessment process. We have to clearly help our students answer that question of, well, where am I going? And we do that through meaningful learning goals and success criteria. Area. And so as always, if you have questions, feel free to reach out to either of us. Misty and I are happy to help clarify or address any wonderings that you may have along the way. And so if you go to kystandards.org, you're going to want to click on that icon that says Balanced Assessment PL Modules, and that's going to be under General PL Modules. So thank you for joining us today, and we hope that this has been helpful.